My name is Katie Rincrica, and I'm currently a senior at the Common of the Sacred Heart, which is in New York City. And today I'm just going to speak to you guys a little bit about the importance of STEM mentorship, specifically for young women in our society. So just a little about me. I'm lucky because my dad, who's actually right here, um, was uh, is a programming teacher, and he's always been interested in technology. So technology has had a huge presence in my life ever since I was really young. Um, but I realized that um, the passion that I developed for technology over the years was really largely due to my dad's influence. And research has shown to back this up that support from family and friends is especially important when encouraging young women to enter the STEM field. Um, so my goal was to create um, a similar supportive environment uh, like the one that I had at home um, at my Sacred Heart School to give um, other women and girls at my school the opportunity to explore their potential interests in technology. So throughout the past three years, I've been working on more fully integrating technology into my school's curriculum. Um, so in 10th grade, I went to my school's computer science teacher and asked him to help me put together a syllabus for a new computer science club. Um, so this was us in 10th grade. Um, so I realized through my independent work with technology, like on my own taking classes, that um, a lot of skills like how to store code on GitHub or how to use the command line were really just kind of neglected in traditional CS classes, but were actually really useful to know. So I wanted to share these skills alongside a bunch of others um, in the hopes that I could accomplish two things. So first, I wanted to develop more interest in technology um, and STEM in general by giving girls the resources to explore areas of technology that are beyond the traditional CS curriculum. And uh, second, I wanted to prepare the girls with a more advanced um, technological skill set to kind of fall back on when they were confronting more complex problems in the future if they did decide to pursue um, STEM as a career. So these two goals were always kind of in the back of my mind when um, I've been working on this and have greatly uh, shaped my efforts in STEM mentorship. So for the first year of the club, we began with a web development part. Um, this is a screenshot of the website that we created back in 2016. Um, I chose web, web development because it's easy to learn, um, gratifying, and I had professional experience working as a web developer. So beyond the technical skills that I had from working as a web developer, um, uh, the other skills that I learned uh, proved to be helpful when leading this club. Um, and one of those is many of the clients that I've worked for in web development um, don't really know much about the back end side of things and um, they have an idea in their head of what they want their website to look like so I would help them kind of uh, and explain to them how um, back end code what I was working with could help create the front end display that they had in mind. Um, so the need for clarity in those uh, explanations helped me become a lot more articulate when I was explaining to beginner club members how to work with web development and begin building their own websites. So by the end of the year, each girl had learned how to use GitHub, navigate the command line, integrate basic APIs, and code in HTML and CSS. And this is a screenshot of one of, one of the members' uh, pages. She was a freshman at the time. Um, uh, so I just wanted to show you that. And we did this by providing each member with an individual folder in the file system on GitHub which if you haven't heard of it, it's just a website that pretty much all programmers use to um, store files on. Um, so each uh, member had a folder with an HTML page and a CSS page, and before the meetings, we would all uh, get together, pull the most recent code from the repository as a group, and then they would each only push to their own individual folders to avoid conflicts between the versions of code. So when we returned the next summer, I was really excited to see that a lot of the members had spent uh, their summers kind of diving deeper into other areas of technology that we hadn't covered in the club yet, um, such as circuitry and other types of programming. So we decided to move on from web development and uh, begin learning how to program in Python. So in the first few months of the club, um, I taught the girls basic Python syntax and methods for approaching programming, problem programming problems in a very step-by-step goal-oriented way, which I think is one of the most important skills that you learn by um, working with technology. So every Thursday, we would tackle a new programming problem like this, which would um, employ new skills like sorting integers or manipulating strings. So this year, um, the juniors in the club uh, have learned enough through their previous years that they could assume kind of a bigger role in the leadership of the club. So I broke uh, the girls in the club into groups with a junior lead, each junior uh, leading a group of younger students and they're working on projects with Arduinos um, that we got through the school's budget, um, and they're working on projects like creating a temperature sensor for our school's rooftop garden, and creating a dog treat dispenser for our school's dog, Hank. Um, so since our time together consists of only 30 minutes every week, the progress that they've made on these projects is really astounding. Um, I'm really proud of the leadership that the girls have shown, as well as the new members 
uh, willingness to adapt and learn new things. I hope that next year, because I'm a senior so I'm leaving, um, the girls will use the skills that they've learned to expand upon our prior projects, continue to learn new things together, and most importantly, use technology to benefit our community. Um, I kind of founded the club with the spirit of using the power of technology to give back to our CSH community, and I hope that this idea continues to inspire the club members in the future. So with more of my time available because of these juniors' leadership, I began developing a new STEM program for a group of girls from a local middle school called the Cornelia Connolly Center. Um, I spent a few months planning uh, an eight-week program uh, with mini units and the same units for the club, web development, Python, and Arduinos, and then we are going to um, let them work on a final project to present to their parents. So the first session of the program and web development was really fantastic. The girls really exceeded my expectations um, and how eager they were to learn, how well they listened, and how focused they were when working independently. Um, and towards the end of the session, they began working on their own websites where their chosen topics range from environmental consciousness to cute boys. And I am grateful for the opportunity to work with these girls and I'm really excited to see how they pro progress in the future. So, just overall, why is it important that we encourage girls to pursue STEM? First of all, many girls feel that they're less capable than men of succeeding in STEM, but there's absolutely no evidence to support this, yet for some reason, this mindset remains in our society. So by building girls' confidence in STEM, by preparing them to accept failure and grow from it instead of giving up, and by showing them the endless possibilities for achievement in STEM fields, we can dissolve this toxic mindset once and for all. But the process really starts from the bottom up, which is why mentoring young women is especially critical. Right now, only uh, women only make up 15 to 25% of the STEM workforce, and this leads to a shortage of female role models in the tech industry. You know, when we think of pioneers in tech, we think of people like Elon Musk, and we think of Bill Gates, and we think of Steve Jobs, and this further perpetuates the stereotype that girls are less capable of achieving great things in STEM. I've been excited to see that this is starting to change, and this conference really proves that high school students are really leading the way on that. And initiatives like Girls Who Code and National Center for Women in Information Technology have created these communities for girls in STEM to come together and learn and celebrate their achievements uh, in technology. The best way to confront this stereotype, in my opinion, is to provide young women with more opportunities to develop their interests in STEM, and then to foster this interest by allowing them to pursue the issues that they care about the most. This will lead to a new generation of female role models entering the STEM field within the next 10 years, which will create a ripple effect in um, encouraging the generations after them. So I wanted to share my story to show how important it is to mentor young women in STEM. Um, I really encourage you all to work within your own communities to create more opportunities for girls to explore STEM. And it's really important to note that STEM isn't for everyone, um, and that's totally fine. You know, like ruling out what you don't want to do is just as important as finding out what you do. Um, the important thing is for girls to have the opportunity and the resources to experiment in STEM so they can make better decisions about their educational pursuits and not just shy away from STEM out of fear of the unknown. So, thank you.